of anything at hustlerskungfulifeskills.com. We're going to talk about service today. We're going to talk about what you should do to serve the right customer. There's a catch to service. When you serve the wrong people, you don't only get the results that you don't want. You also get a lot of bullshit along with it. Give you an example. When I was giving away these courses for free, let me tell you what I thought. Let me tell you what was up in my mind, right? We give these courses to people. They would take these courses. They would execute. Then they would take the money from the execution and buy bigger and more courses. That's what I, I, I was a silly rabbit. I was a silly rabbit. People don't value what they can get for free. And I actually thought about it and I deconstructed it. I got a course that could talk about you can make 2,500 bucks in 30 days is free. That don't make no sense. People were suspicious. People were apprehensive. I learned my lesson. Now, another component, there are some of you out here in the internets that if I gave you a course that would do you well, that would serve you, that would make you money, you would be throwing money at me. You'd be like, man, this is free stuff. Wow. But that's a small percentage of y'all. It's a really, really small percentage. So I was having great acts of service with people who didn't care. Many of our service members died for bullshit. Many of our service members died from friendly fire. Many of our service members died for being in wars we shouldn't have had. And that's what makes this day so poignant. That people who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us to be free. I remember, and this is going to be a story because I'm not going to get too deep into it. But I used to work in TMC3. And I was tasked to be part of the community health team. Back then, we used to track what you now call STDs as VD. I was on the VD team. I knew everyone that was burning on post. I knew what they had. And in some cases, I knew who they got it from. Because when they, they bring you in, they ask you, it's like, okay, who were the last five people you slept with? So we can contact them discreetly. Send a letter to their troops like, look, you need to come to the TMC, get checked out. That's all we say. And they come in. And I got to admit that the people that I worked with, these people from across the United States, took their jobs very seriously. They took their mission very seriously. We didn't have any leaks. We didn't have anyone on the community health team leaking out information because my boys used to be like, you know who's burning. They would be bird dogging. Like if I would talk to a girl, it's like, okay, she's safe, she's safe. I was like, no, it don't work like that. But the character, the dignity, the discretion that these people did their jobs. I mean, we knew everyone on post who had HIV. Syphilis, herpes. We even knew about those people who had what I used to call the Korean black VD. The stuff was so antibiotic resistant because just to give you a little history, what we would do is <clears throat> create a culture and then put it in a Petri dish. And we'll take a culture of whatever they had. And then we would take these little antibiotic tablets and put them directly on the culture. So whatever had the biggest band of no growth, that's what we gave the patient. This black Korean VD was like, <laughs> Anson Millen, we don't care. Whatever, throw it at me. Ah, I'm going to keep growing. And there was, uh, I think, Tobermeisen was the thing that got rid of that. And I don't know. And this was many, many years ago. 
because the stuff adapted very quickly. But it was about the character and the professionalism of all those people that I worked with because none of that stuff ever got out. None of it, because we knew that we were serving service members who entrusted us with their private information, their fears, their all kinds of. I got stories that I'm going to tell on Disruptive Mail. I got stories that will make you fucking cry. But it was about service because we weren't making that much money. Not in the military, you weren't making that much money. But we were serving the people on that military mission. And I'm glad and I'm proud to have served with the people I served with. Because if those folks were in the Trump organization, there wouldn't be no leaks. There wouldn't be no putting no stuff out. Not at all. But with service... This is how you start a business the correct way. The primary function of a business is to serve people. Now, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. It's to serve people. It's to put out a product or a service that serves people. Many people in the last video that I did, go check it out, where I was talking about how to start a business. Many people go for the money. They don't go for the service. Come August 6th or 3rd, I forget, it'll be my ninth year on YouTube. How have I managed to stay here this long with not a large channel. I don't even have 100,000 subscribers. Service. I've been serving thousands of people for nine years. And some people get the message. Some people don't. I'm here for the folks who get the message. You're not going to be a millionaire overnight. You could be a millionaire in your lifetime. You could be a millionaire if you serve enough people. You could be a millionaire, but it ain't going to be easy. It's not going to be something that you can set on your iPad and forget about it and make all this money. And for those folks who are just joining us, we have the Memorial Day sale, 51% off of any product at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. Use code VET. Uh, it's going to go on a little bit longer than I said, so be aware of that. I got a question for all of you, and I want to answer. How many of you have devoted yourself to a mission of service in anything you've ever done in life? And this is something that I've kind of looked back on. Let's take, remember when I was the hall monitor, when we used to have hall monitors? And there was this girl, she was so fine. Lisa was just, I wanted Lisa so bad. But she was in the hallway. She was tardy. I gave her that pink slip, knowing that she was never, ever going to pay me any attention for show after doing that. Knew it wasn't coming. And Ms. Phillips was running corner. It's like, good job, Cameron, good job. That's what I'm talking about. When you do the right thing when nobody's looking. Because if you do it often enough, and I'm going to tell you, sometimes you could do the right thing and no one gives a damn. You could do the right thing 10 times. No one gives a damn. But I'm telling you, the minute that you sacrifice your integrity and do the wrong thing, someone's going to be looking. This is what I'm talking about, service and dedication and devotion to whatever you do. I cuss at you guys. I talk shit to you guys. But my heart's in the right place. It's evidenced by me giving away all those courses. I'm here to serve people. I'm here to help people. 
I want you guys to live like I do. I want you guys to have the ability to have a good productive life. I want you guys to know what it's like to be the boss, to have cops respect you, to have your woman respect you. I want you guys to know that. But the thing is, I can want it until the cows come home. But unless you want it, unless you're really to execute and act on it, I can want it all day long. Ain't nothing going to happen until you want it, until you want to be that dude, until you want to be that woman. So you want to be the person that is giving great service. You want to be the person who is doing amazing things for other people. Let's see what we got going on here in the comments. It's a holiday. Hopefully you had a good holiday. Josh Barr, the more you serve, the more you earn. Absolutely correct. Thank you for being the moderator. What's up, Johnny Wall? Appreciate you. Stia Stefan, Cody Weinstein. Or, no, I'm sorry. Cody Weinman. The Wild Jones Report. Thank you for being the moderator. What's up? What's up, Arabic writing? <laughs> Today's the day. That's the mantra. I like that. Thank you, Stefan. I fixed it, William. All four pockets full. I'm happy to be here. That's a cool ass nickname. What's up, Al Gordon? He finally got the notification squad. That is funny. Since the reality there's no such thing as free lunch, you're right. What's up, Kindle Vision? Sure thing, saw steps to wealth. This dude bakes what's going on. William Watts is the parental contract bundle. And yeah, all that stuff's in the LLC bundle. The parenting contracts, uh, the if it's not, it should be the child support. Yeah, you know, all that stuff's there. If it's not, I'll put it there. William Watts. I'm going I'm to tell y'all some stories about that, Roderick. <laughs> What's, up? What's up, Mika? And if they merit your products are like blue magic, that blue pill. Playing football in high school. Okay. What's up, Lamo? Thanks for being the moderator. Lance Brown, caregiver of father. That's deep. I know what that I know what that's like. Uh, Sam Thomas, we ain't talking about that today. We're talking about service. See, one of the things that you gotta do is you gotta do some more research. Because one of the things I've noticed with this generation is a lack of putting forth a little effort. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. The more L's that you take, and you know the L, that's for loser, losses. The more L's that you take, the more W's you will get. And a lot of y'all don't want to take any L's. You know, like, I ain't trying to lose any money. And I'm going to be real with y'all. You know, losing four, five, six hundred bucks, they ain't, you ain't lost a lot of money. You ain't lost. Well, some of my ad campaigns, I would blow a thousand just testing. Just testing a keyword, just testing the concept. So stop with that stuff. But let's see. Uh, Anthony Johnson, I'm devoted to purchasing quality real estate and make it affordable. To no slumlord. Good luck, brother. Good luck with that one. Cody Wyman, my mission is to provide the greatest music license service in my area to my customers. All right. Eric Williams, help enough people to get what they want and you will get rewarded with what you want. Zig Ziglar or Jim Rome. It's true. It's very, very true. What's up, Maurice Anderson? True, true, true. Good thing Joseph Tucker. 
Patrick. Um, everybody is getting in the weed business. I don't understand what you're talking about. Everybody's getting in the weed business. Uh, Anthony Johnson, no. That's just one particular kind of hustle. All right. So l- let's talk about the service thing because I want y'all guys to hear me and to really act on this. An act of service, and we had someone who listened to me. They volunteered for a political campaign for free, worked, and got offered a job that's going to lead them to a seven-figure job on K Street. You know how much money lobbyists make? Minimum $1.5 million a year. Minimum. Because what they're doing is going to earn companies billions or hundreds of millions. So their salaries are nothing compared to the benefit that they bring. Sam, this generation doesn't know <laughs> at times with directions to fear losing money and wasting time. And that's, that's a good point. Let's talk about wasting time. If you're doing anything that expands your knowledge base, you're not wasting time. If you run an ad campaign, you try to do Facebook ads, you try to do something that doesn't work out, you just bought your education. You didn't lose money. You bought your education. Tress Passion 7. When I started my demolition business, I took so many losses in the money and in social life. Now, eight years later, it's paying me well. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm going to read that again. Tres Passion 7. When I started my demolition business, I took so many losses in time, money, social life. Now, eight years, eight years, eight years later, it's paying me well. Once again, this is this is what I'm saying. Any business is going to take you three to five years to really get through those rough early years. <laughs> I know, Sam. Sure thing, Bay Area investor. Agent J. Poole, I knew lobbyists. That's all right. Here, here's the path. You ever notice how these Congress people who go and stay in Congress multiple terms, their net worth goes up? It's because they become lobbyists. Because the thing is, let's say you served your state well. Let's say you voted the way that they wanted you to. You know, 12 years, right? You know what you build in those 12 years? You got connections with Washington. You know how this committee works. You know who runs this committee. That's valuable. And they're going to bring you over to K Street. Sign the term sheet, 1.5, 2.5, like if like Paul Ryan. Everyone's like, well, he's quitting. You know why he's quitting? Paul Ryan is going to get in the private industry and make millions because he was the Speaker of the House. This is their retirement plan. Go to the House, be in Congress five to 12 years, go to K Street, or become a CNN analyst. I mean, there, there's so many things that these folks can do. Uh, since reality, I think people need to do it. Reading a book is a very small step. It's a good step, but people need to execute. Uh, Stefan, no, it's never too late. Once again, recession means that people pull back, but money still flows. Wells Fargo became the largest bank in America through the recession at the time. Oh, Netflix has a documentary about congressmen going to K Street. Sam Thomas, well, I'm interested in film production and multimedia and attempting to build a business base in this oversight. All right, Sam, I got some game for you. You need to create a YouTube channel or an Instagram account, and you need to get it banging. Because if you can build a YouTube account or you can build an Instagram account, people will find you. Uh, I don't have his, this thing because I can't remember his name. But this, this is his brother I found. 
he's got some amazing Instagram stuff. And I watched like three of his videos and they were all brand videos. One was Foot Locker. Another one was Adidas. I mean, he's probably getting ten to $25,000 for those spots. I am not joking. So you're you, you're looking at it the wrong way when you say this competitive. It the, the days of just showing up and being cute and getting a lot of money. Yeah, that's gone. You got to put some work into it. But it's not competitive. There's a lot of bullshit out there. So when you put out something that's not bullshit, you have no competition. It's not competitive. Uh, all high income earners are good salespeople. And absolutely. Uh, the yep, perfect example in Clay Davis from the HBO series The Wire was a lobbyist. Get me Roger Stone is the documentary. These guys made millions of dollars having dinner. Uh, Bay Area Investor, what's your take on the Bohemian Groove? I've been asked to join, but I don't know what the, the their intentions are. I don't really know what the Bohemian thing is. When you say Bohemian, break that down. Cat D, do you think it would be a bad move to get into becoming a realtor? No. I think the best time to get into real estate is when everything is crap. Because if you can make it in that stuff as a realtor, yeah. Because, see, the worst thing to do is to go into real estate or any profession at the top of the market. You don't have any hustle skills. You don't have any struggle bones. So when the market goes, whoop, as it will, you freak out. Next thing you know, you're selling tires at Tony's Tire Shop. Perfect time. Uh, I love that, Gabran. Jamal Smith, the key is to make a fan page. Now they're personal. That's the difference. Okay. I don't build and manage sites. No detail ass. Pretty much, Erica. I'm a Michigan real estate broker. I do just fine. You make the sacrifices just like any other business. You can get that money. Uh, Jamal Smith, internet marketing. Uh, I got a friend who's making a million bucks a month. Once again, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. If you are really good at what you do, you become a skilled technician, you become a craftsman of what you do. Whoo! All right, once again, I made millions of dollars on this channel. This channel's not that big. Uh, this month, I might crack 100,000 views. And I'm probably up to about $38,000 for this month. There are channels out there getting 1.5 million views per month. And they don't earn 120 for what I make. Become good. It ain't about the numbers. It's about the service. Uh, I had like two people buy... The Hustlers LLC this weekend. That was six grand right there. I mean, once again, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to actually not deviate from that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm going to take you on a journey with me. I've been doing this YouTube thing, this internet marketing thing for nine years. But I also have sold products on eBay at a high level and Amazon at a high level. So my total time of making money online from roughly 2002, no, 2001 up to now. So that's, I've been making money online longer than I had traditional regular jobs. Now, now why do I bring up eBay and why do I bring up Amazon? Because I do neither one of those things to this day. The lessons that I learned on eBay, the lessons I learned on Amazon, Merchant for Phil, not Amazon FBA, are many of the lessons that I employ and use to the day. Sales is sales is sales is sales. The platform may change, but the people never do. 
This is why you can go out and get an old book written in 1920, 1925 about sales. And many of those principles and concepts will still work because we as people have not changed. Now, as I was out here serving people, I noticed a few things. I was working my ass off and I wasn't getting any results. And this is the parallel between business and dating. All my guys out here, you're going to feel this. How many of you have been a good dude, taking a woman out to dinner, was the perfect fucking gentleman? You didn't touch her. You kept the conversation clean. You didn't talk about sex. You probed her for her interest. You treated her like a princess. And you got friend zoned. All right. The parallel. You are a good dude. You're more. You have morals. You have ambitions. You're a good dude. But you were serving the wrong woman. So when you serve the wrong market, you get bad results. Now, you take your good dude self and you find yourself a woman that appreciates those qualities. Many women don't appreciate those qualities. We've all been lied to. We've been led astray, bamboozled. Our parents were unintentionally full of duplicity teaching us these things that don't work. So now you're a good dude and you find a woman because you've learned the game, you learn how to vet, you learn how to test, and now you find this woman who likes that. And all of a sudden, you leave in the restaurant, she's holding your hand. She all hugged up. She's in the car and she right next to you. When you drop her off, she's standing there because she wants that kiss. She's like, you want to come inside, Johnny? Because now you're a good dude that's a salesperson. You know how to qualify prospects. Now it's fun dating. Now you don't have any complaints about women. You're like, I don't know all these dudes complain about women. She's like, I'm doing just fine. Man, I'm kind of forgetting names. I'm juggling so many women. Same thing with sales. I made a miscalculation on giving away those courses for free because of my demographics at that time did not appreciate that. Not to say they were bad people. Or, no, 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 no. I was giving high levels of service to people who didn't want it. I did not vet my audience and my demographics properly. I thought I did, but the, the money was saying, no, you didn't, fool. Mm -mm, nope, you didn't do it right. Because we can lie to ourselves, but your bank account ain't going to lie to you. Your bank account's going to be like, yeah, we looking nice or alert, 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 low, low funds, low money. We're, your money's low. Your money's low. You're, you're out of money. Your bank account ain't going to never lie to you. Never. So part of learning how to serve is learning how to serve the right people. Good level of service, high level of service to people who are disinterested, uh, people who don't want it, people who can't afford you. You could give them the best service in the world and they're going to like, eh. Like you can be the best dude in the world and you get with a girl who don't appreciate you. Eh, that's just the way it is. That's life. Sucks. <laughs> that's why I created Disruptive Male. Let's see. Um, good Lord. What are y'all doing up in here? Uh... Jam Jamal, congressman get 170K base, not counting inside the trading. Uh, actually, that's a misnomer. They get 170K base plus like 600,000 for staff. So that position has a perks of almost $800,000.
They get money to pay their staff. They get per diems for their housing. It's a lot more than 170. Wayne Escobar, what's up? Robert Rob, that's actually how I found out about the Koch brothers and how they use their wealth and influence to pass the law. Every day they're doing this. Uh, Sam Thomas, I want to use the media platforms like YouTube. I have a bachelor's degree in business and I want to combine both worlds of entertainment and business. I was thinking of Gary Vee. You, you, you actually have missed what Gary Vee does. Let me give you the Gary Vee game. Gary Vee uses all of us for social proof to sell to the Fortune 2000. These are the companies that can afford to pay him 2 and $3 million a month. He don't, I can't say he doesn't care about us, but he ain't after our money. You can like sell a $10 ebook. All, every, everything that Gary V does is to position himself as an authority to sell to these companies. So you're, you're missing the game on Gary V. Since rarely, I love how people complain that we're moving from a manufacturing economy to a service economy as if trade was never about service. Best traders were the best people to provide service. Uh, Francisco, Francisco, is it worth joining the Chamber of Commerce for a service business? Good question. Are you a friendly and gregarious person? Because, see, when you join the Chamber of Commerce, you have to participate in their meetings. You have to go to their events. Because if you just join, you ain't going to get no business. You're going to actually have to work on that. So, yeah. Robert, Rob, yep, I give you mad props, G. They, the way you make more, more money on a fraction of views, quality over quantity. I mean, because this is one of the things I learned. It is very, very hard to get millions of views when you're talking about a serious subject. If I was skateboarding and I busted my ass, oh, yeah, four or five million views all day long. Or if I was picking boogers, millions of views. Or if I was doing social experiments, uh, talking about millions of views. But look at the business channels. Gary V is quasi business channel. And he struggled for a while before he started taking off. He had to do a lot of testing. Uh, there's another guy. But look, how many business channels have millions of views? I think at this moment, I got like 14 million views over eight, almost nine years. There are YouTubers who get that per month. They get 14 million views per month. It's all about your topic. I'll talk about that more in Digital Citizen. Kylie, is marketing on Craigslist dead since they started charging? No. You should look at charging as a good thing because most folks are not going to spend money, so your ads are going to stand out. If I was still doing Craigslist and doing resale, I would set up a budget of 500 bucks just to see what happens, and then I would, you know, depending upon, hold on, I got to do this because we are running out of juice. All right. Depend upon the results. Dang, friends on the hurt like hell. Pretty much. All right. Good Lord. Sales, sales, sales. I had two YouTubers with 45, 40 subscribers consult with me. Like, how do, how do uh, I make money? The cute party is over unless you sell some. Uh, you got a lot of people who equivalent, who, who equal millions of views with a lot of money. There are people out there who have two, three million views a month, and they're struggling with their little YouTube money and their little job money. They're struggling. Ben, the bartender, wants to come inside. All right, Kylie. 
Lewis Ward, I already have a C corporation in the foreign corporation. Could I still get a holding company? It would be three shareholders for this corporation. I mean, yeah. Like, all right, let's just do, I think I know where you're going with this. If you want to take, oh, see, the thing is with the C corporation, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your business model is, is you got that dual taxation thing, which could work for you. I don't know what you're doing. So it just depends. Cal, Carl Sneed, I'm actually finding out that Craigslist is actually better now. I think the free has ran off the riffraff. Exactly. If you're a business person and you're used to spending money, what's a few little fees? You can't sell to the unassailable, pretty much. <laughs> all, four, all four pockets full. It's like a jungle sometimes. Lewis W. Ward, the Hustlers, LLC. Oh, let's see. Um, dang, I forgot to turn off the ads for this one. Yeah, I mean, Gary Vee don't want our money. And this is what, and he's honest about it. He tells you, but people like, I can't see that. And something else about Gary Vee. Gary Vee was a successful business person before YouTube. He didn't come on YouTube and then YouTube turned him into what he is. He did that before YouTube and he learned the game. He lost weight. He got the look. He started talking a certain way. He started being this argumentative. It happened. Definitely Jamal Smith. Malachi Stafford. So how do you find the right people to sell to? I have a video talking about that before this one. So watch it. Uh, Randall Bragg, is mailing flyers effective if offering services to landscapers? Let's look at this. Landscapers are out all day long. I would assume that you need to, because the thing is, when you're dealing with a certain demographic, you need a way to capture their attention. This is where everything's going to. This is where every, the world's coming to. You need to get into this in inbound marketing thing where you can do something to get their attention. Mr. Lizzie Real 555. What's up? Greetings from Chile. How's the weather there? Lewis Ward, appreciate you for the $5 super chat. Robbie Rob. You know, that's funny. I actually have to make time to use the drone because I'm doing so many things. Part of what I want to do is take some time each day and, and try to do something different. Last time I used a drone was like three weeks ago. What's up, Camille? So part of this thing, and this is why there's such synergy between Hustlers Kung Fu and Disruptive Mail, where I talk primarily about game, how to get yourself together as a man. Because as a man, you're selling yourself to women. There's presentation. There's the clothes. There's prospecting. And you should be prospecting at all times and all places. You shouldn't have to get ready, go to the club, put your gear on, put your smell good on, and go hunting. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some game here. Target, Publix, Home Depot, Lowe's, between the hours of 7.30 and about 10. Great, great hunting ground. Because, one, these women are dressed for work. They're not with their girlfriends. If you got the 30 second, let me, you know, give me your number, pitch, open pitch and close, you could be stacking up numbers all day long. Every day.
Uh, Lewis Ward, I'm changing the C Corp to S Corp. Okay. Because, once again, I don't really know what you're doing. So it's hard to answer your questions because I'm in the blind on this. I have no clue. None whatsoever. All right. So this is what I'm doing. This is the Memorial Day sale. Everything is 50% off. Well, 51% off. 